With my name. Uh, you, don't, you don't have to say your name. You can just say, I was what you were doing. You can say, um, I was, I was uh, the, the leader of the group. Of, okay, so I was an activist in the Zionist group in, I don't even remember which city you were at. Okay. In such a city. So, uh, <coughs> my activities began after the Six Day War. And I was an activist in Sverdlovsk city. It's in Uralian mountains. Uh, since 68, we joined together with some other activists and had a group of about 10 families uh, underground. We were studying Hebrew, studying culture, history, and had some connections with Moscow, Vilnius, Kiev, and other cities. I want to uh, connect. Like I, wa I want you to tell me about how you first heard of the Leningrad trial, because, but can you start with the sentence saying, I was an activist in, an in the Zionist underground, and, okay, why don't you just forget about it, okay, can you just tell me how you first heard, do you remember when you first heard about it? It was like a blow, it was in the press, that Jewish activists, or no, Jewish uh, terrorists have caught a plane hijacked the plane, and uh, we thought, of course, it was a provocation. Nobody of us was believing in that at first time. And uh, we even were talking to uh, abroad that uh, it's, it's just next step to oppress Jewish movement in Russia. And after that, gradually, we began to understand that it was something for real. Why did you say terrorist? I wonder. Why? They say, not we said terrorist. A, a press informed that the Jewish terrorists, the Jewish uh, rebel, Jewish criminals hijacked the plane. It was the Soviet press announcing. I think it was next day after the, they tried to do it on 16th of June 1970. Uh, we were, of course, in shock. It was a very difficult time from the point of view of hijacking the planes. Arab terrorists were hijacking planes. There were victims. All the world was against it. And all of a sudden, they said that Jewish criminals have caught the plane. So, at first, how did it affect the Jewish community in Russia? After, after the Jewish criminals take the plane, how did it affect? Do you feel there were more arrests after that? Well, in Sverdlovsk, I wouldn't say that it, at first... Uh, we had some specific uh, uh, evidence of hardening the situation. After all, it was in a very distant place. It was in uh, Nova Zork, somewhere in the northwest of Russia. And uh, we were all underground. There was not even one uh, activist on the surface yet. It was the beginning of the movement in Sverdlovsk city. So... Uh, uh, I wouldn't say that there was a special big campaign about that at that time, in our place. So, um, so you heard about it in June, and then after that there was the trial in December. What, what kind of information did you receive? On December they... Uh, <coughs> on December they uh, sentenced two guys to the death sentence for something which was not done. They didn't caught the plane. They were arrested before. They did it because they were not allowed to live in a normal way. And we know, we know at this time that Soviet authorities limit to the, to the zero level almost immigration from Soviet Union. And all those who apply 
I fired from job, I fired from institutes, and I in real despair, they cannot do anything, and I'm not getting permission. So we clearly understand the motives of, of this group. To give for this, their sentence was outstandingly cruel uh, thing. And all the rest of the people have got very long term of imprisonment. So they, they punish people for intention. So, when, when and how did you hear about the verdict? We were together. We have, somebody said that there was an article in the press that the Jewish group hijacked the plane. And it was shock for us. But much stronger shock was when we have heard the verdict in December. <coughs> Two death sentences, 10 to 15 years of imprisonment to the rest of the group. It was terrible. To this time, we already by ourselves experienced a lot of hardship of getting some cultural materials, trying to go to our roots, to link with other activists in other cities. And we understand the despair of the guys who went to this, to punish people by death sentence for the crime which was not done for only intention, it was cruel even in the Soviet Union situation. At that, that very night, one of our activists, Valery Kukui, have got a call from Moscow. And call said, all the activists throughout Soviet Union are going to react strongly. It's time to go out from underground. Valery Kuku invited us and said, we will write a letter of protest. Who will write? He asked me, are you ready? I said, yeah, of course. Say, I want also to write. Valera was writing novels and so on. He liked to write. So let's write two variants of the letter. And after that, we join it together. At this night, I didn't sleep at all. I was writing all the time and pouring this paper, all my soul, all my thoughts about what I think about Soviet Union, about their regime, about how they relate to us, and so on and so on, in politically correct way, of course. And the morning we have met, he said, OK, we will take your letter as a basic, and I will add and polish some other things. And he polished this text. And after that, we all 10 families have signed the letter. We sent to, it to President Podgorny and to of, of President of Soviet Union, Nikolai Podgorny, and to President of Israel, Zalman Shazar at this time. And after that, our saga began as well. <laughs> In a couple of weeks, we already felt all the KGB was after us, cars near the homes invitation to the KGB to interrogations, problems in the workplaces, and first arrest, yes. Who was arrested? Were you arrested? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was the first to be arrested, really. I was arrested for 15 days. Uh, and after that, they added another 13 days, because I announced immediately hunger strike. In the, they put me in a punishment cell immediately <laughs> to show me all the, all the uh, hardship which can face a person who will be really arrested. At 15 days, it was an administrative arrest, not so serious. And three days after me, Valery Kukui, another guy who uh, was co-author of the letter, was arrested. He had got after that three years of imprisonment. I was released after the 27 days. But they tried to develop against me the trial in Article 70, which implies 7 plus 5. So 12 years of imprisonment. I don't know if they tried to frighten me 
or they did it for real, I don't know. But this was a case in a, in a uh, punishment cell, yes. What was the reason you got that punishment? Why? Why were you arrested? Uh, you mean uh, why I was arrested? Yeah. Well, they, they tried first to invite us to KGB and to, to uh, understand why we Soviet Jews, which were quite well established, all of a sudden, begin to defend some kind of criminal, group of criminals who try to hijack the claim, claim. So we try to explain to them that uh, you don't put people into the corner. People just want to go out. It's a basic right. It's written in the Constitution. Everyone is, is, uh, has the right to do so. Why you don't let people to go a normal way? They applied several, we already knew to this time of the situation because from the arrest of the guys in Leningrad and in Novozorsk, there was already several months from June to December. So we studied the situation, of course. Uh, they didn't persuade us that we are not right. They said that if we will not express our regret for what we have written, and I said, I have written the letter. He asked me, who have written the letter? I said, I have written the letter. If they ask me, who else have written the letter? I said, in KGB, I don't talk about this, my kind of matters. You know, we all know, KGB several times were excessive in punishment people. We all know the history of KGB. I don't want to talk about certain people uh, and other people here. When they asked Valery Kukui, who have written the letter, he said, I have written the letter. <laughs> But we didn't reveal that we have written it. But uh, at the same time, yeah. So there were 12 hour investigation in the KGB first. After that, I was invited to my, uh, I, I was writing postdoctorate at this time in the institute and my director invited me and uh, there was another three hour talk he asked me if I have difficulties, what I'm not satisfied with, and so on, and so on, and so on. I said, and the job, okay. But this guy are not so guilty. You can punish them for intention. Not more than that. One year, two years, death penalty. So he said, if you will not refuse from your, uh, uh, and I said, I also want to go. I don't want to live in this country. I don't respect the country. I don't respect the decision, its decision. I want to go as well. That if you will not change your decision, next day you will face more and more difficulties in your life. You will lose your job. You will lose your postgraduate studying. You will get the, they call it in Russian, um, Volchi Bilet. It's, it's a kind of a, it's kind of a, a note that you cannot go anywhere to, to get the job. And in the Soviet Union, any job you can get was a governmental job. There was not private industry there. There were no. So every person was completely dependable on the state. And of course, I refused. And after that, in uh, several days, I was arrested. They said that I was hooligan. I have beaten some woman. I don't know what. Uh, they do whatever, whatever they want if they, if they need to. It was just a demonstration what can happen to me. These 27 days. They were, by, by the way, most difficult in all my refusing life, which continued for 18 years. So that's how it was. And uh, after that, they invited us again. In, in several days, a death penalty was canceled. And uh, when they invited us next time, they invited, took us to the interrogation in the KGB and tried to take from us the written document that will not continue to do any anti-Soviet activities. I asked them what kind of activities you're talking about. Soviet government agreed with us. They canceled the death, death penalty. You see, we were right. The death penalty was excessive. I didn't sign anything, <laughs> anything. But from this time on, we, of course, became 
how to say, uh, legal activists. We went out from underground and it was, of course, very difficult. There was many interrogations, many hardships, and so on and so on. So, from what I saw from, from archives, uh, before the Leningrad trial, there was no, um, there was no demonstrations outside. I mean, when you say I go open, what you did was write a letter which was huge back then with, with, with your sign, but then suddenly there was demonstrations, like I saw in, the, in Moscow, a demonstration of Jews. So do you think that the, the fact that the world finally reacted um, to the death sentence, to the end of trial, gave courage to the Jews to, to rise up and, and speak out? I, I think that the hijacking of the plane and death sentences for that became a milestone in the whole movement. There was movement before the Leningrad trial and after Leningrad trial. It was diff different. Outside world was different. It created outrage not only in our circles. We understood the situation much better than outside Jews. But outside Jews also un understood that there were no hijacking in a classical way, uh, term of, 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 the, of the event. It was intention of people who were put in despair for many years, who tried to go out legally from Soviet Union, and so on and so on. So outrage out in the West was outstanding. There was a lot of demonstrations. General, uh, Generalissimus Franco canceled the death sentence to the people with blood on their hands who killed the policeman, according to request of Golda Meir. And they put Brezhnev in a very awkward situation. A fascist Franco, in Soviet terms, was more human <laughs> than communist Brezhnev. So he, he had no alternative but cancel the uh, sent this sentence, but uh, but the pressure from outside was ongoing, stronger and stronger and stronger. People all of a sudden understood that there is a real problem inside Soviet Union. Before that, Soviet Union also always cancelled that such a problem existed at all. No, all Soviet Jews are very loyal Soviet citizens. They don't want to leave the country. Oh, there are a little group of fanatics, religious, religious uh, dissidents, and so on, who probably wanted. We, we, let, we let them go. That was official position of Soviet government propaganda. Now, all of a sudden, they have seen the group of people from despair try to go out in this criminal way. Not because they wanted to kill somebody or wanted to protest something. They just wanted to, ex, uh, to, 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 to go out, to use a basic elementary human right to exit from the country. In the whole Western world, move, moving was free. There was problem to enter the country, not the problem to go out of the country. Every citizen in the West can go buy a ticket and, and, and fly, or take a train and, 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 and go. And Soviet Union, which pretends itself as the most human, most advanced society in the West, was fighting on dominance in the world, this basic human rights was not existing. And that's what hijacking demonstrated to the whole world. That was the meaning of all this act of despair. Of course, it demanded also a lot of courage to do so in Soviet conditions, with the KGB and complete control over the government of the society. It's not a country like Western country. In Soviet Union, millions of people were killed in order to give to the government complete control over society. 
No one in Soviet Union was expected to go against governmental or party line. The punishment could be many years of imprisonment, or as we have seen in this case, death penalty. They have killed tens of millions of their own citizens in order to exercise this kind of control over society and on the press and on everything else. So from these positions, they could say to the world, we don't have this kind of problem. Everything is quiet. Everybody is satisfied. Nobody wants to go. Yuri Kasharovsky, take Sharosh. Okay. So how do you think the Leningrad trial affected uh, the Jews in Russia, not in the West, in Russia? Uh, first of all, we went out to open struggle. The epoch of open letters began. We have written the letters of protest to Soviet authorities, to Western uh, organizations, to United Nations, to Israeli <coughs> organizations. And uh, we have signed these letters openly. We have given our addresses and telephone at home. Uh, so it's, it, it was transition from underground movement to open movement who had still underground activities, I of meant, course. I meant, uh, how did it affect, I meant, did it, do you feel like it gave more co courage to people to fight? Because you finally see that there is a result to that. I would say that it was burning of the bridges with Soviet society. The, this trial showed another time the cruelty and injustice. And uh, of course, we were influenced also not only by trial itself, because inside Soviet Union, uh, government has a complete control of the press. We didn't have so much information about that. But we have listened to the radio of America, to radio of Israel, to the radio of uh, Deutsche Welle as well. And, and there we were getting more and more details about what was going on in the West. It also encouraged the movement inside Soviet Union. I think that out of this trial, the movement went much stronger, much more uh, efficient, much more dare and courageous. Yes, uh, the example of the guys who were ready to risk their lives really, in order to get out of the country was encouraging. There was controversy, of course, about the way they did it, because we didn't accept a hijacking of the plane as a legal act. But they had enough courage to do it. And ultimately, because Soviet authorities were not wise enough to punish them slightly, the whole movement have got a real push outside and inside of Soviet Union. It was a new level, much higher level of activities. Uh, yes. And how did you, how did, I don't know if you, if you knew a lot of uh, non-Jews, but how do you, if you did know them, how do you think the, the, the non-Jews, Russian, reacted to this trial? Difficult to say. Uh, Soviet Union used the term hijacking. Hijacking by itself had a negative, of course, approach by ordinary people. But if you would use the terms which were used in the West, people tried to get out of the country at any price, then it was co completely different. You see? A formulation here had a very, very big impact. For us, it was an act of courage and an act of despair. For Russian, they began to feel that something is 
not so well. Something is very wrong in Soviet Union. People are trying to get out of this country by all possible means, you know. It, it, it began, it, it influenced. And, and the, way, the way of information which was pouring in by voices uh, from abroad also was influenced very much to this, uh, to this end. You said before in the kitchen that Silva Zamenson is an Israeli icon. Why is that? Uh, for us, for all of us, everyone who took part in this action was a hero, of course. Uh, and uh, Silva Zalmans and I would say uh, every, every one of us had a postcard of Silva, a picture. It was like, a, you know, a painting even. We had it in our, uh, I had it in my uh, room. Everyone had it in his room. It was like an icon, right? Like an idol. Uh, yeah. Uh, and she was very beautiful, by the way. It's, it's, the picture was very beautiful. So we were proud that uh, this woman was capable of doing that. Yeah, that's true. She was the first to get out also. So it, uh, it added. She won. She tried. She was punished and she won. For many years of refu in refusal, Silva Zalmansov was for us a kind of an icon. Yes, that's true. That's true. Uh, you like to add, although I feel like this is very complete. Like, okay. As you feel? Great. So uh, I, 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 th I think that I would add only one thing. Okay. We didn't know the people who, who did it, but after I have a chance to, to meet with some of them, I realized that they earn even more respect than we had to them because everyone was a person with a clear-cut outlook, intelligent. People who can be an example for many others of the way they have lived their lie, life without lie and without bending to the authorities. It's very important to, to live a person's own life. They did it. And of course, they divorce a lot of respect for that. When did you make Aliyah? 89. It was 19 years after hijacking. They came earlier than me. <laughs> I applied in 71. I was 18 years in refusal.